Welcome everyone to the 24th annual Miami Jewish Film Festival, one of the world's largest and oldest cultural arts events. We wanna thank all of our members, our sponsors, our community partners, volunteers, and all of the film lovers, uh, and especially our presenting sponsors, the Center for the Advancement of Jewish Education, SAGE, uh, and the Greater Miami Jewish Federation for their continued support uh, through all these years. My name is Lyle Rothman, and I am the Rabbi and Chief Experience Officer at University of Miami Hillel, uh, Go Canes. Um, and uh, I'm excited to, uh, to moderate uh, this conversation with, uh, with the star of the show, of the star of the film, uh, David Fisher, um, and with Andrew Bourne and Daniel Feldman, Connie O'Connor. Um, uh, and the film we're going to be talking about is The Rope Warrior. Uh, premiering this year uh, at the festival. So thank you all for joining us. Really uh, wonderful to see you all. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, David, I, I want to start with you. Um, uh, this is about you. Uh, what you do is truly unique. What, what is the inspiration for you for, for, the, for, for jumping rope? Uh, well, I got started uh, to train for volleyball and just fell in love with the sport because there's so many different fun, creative things that you can do with it. And uh, in the very beginning, I was doing a lot with the American Heart Association with their Jump Rope for Heart program. And I was going around helping them out uh, and uh, going to different schools to promote the event. And then I started doing school assemblies and it just kind of exploded from there. Um, I, I can say, as someone who experienced Jump Rope for Heart uh, in elementary school, I'm 39 at this point, but uh, it definitely, uh, it's, a, it's a full experience with the schools. And so uh, the idea of jumping rope is just, I think on its most basic level, just really um, accessible to so many people, because uh, all you need is a rope to do it. Right. It, inexpensive, portable, and there's an infinite amount of things that you can do with it. And especially during... Uh, you know, lately during COVID, uh, a lot of people have taken to jump rope and different uh, jump rope communities have sprung up over the internet. And, uh, you know, it's, it seems like a perfect thing to be doing. And you can, uh, just by the nature of it, you've got your own personal piece of PE equipment and you have to be kind of socially distant from somebody else, you know, cause you'll hit them if they're too close to you. So uh, it's, seems to be to be the perfect exercise. So the six foot, foot rule really works for jumping rope uh, in every way, uh, shape and form. Um, David, we're gonna obviously come back to you, but uh, we have our, our wonderful sort of help, people who help make the film, um, Andrew, Daniel, and, and Connie. Um, so to, I guess this is a question to all of you. Um, tell us a little bit about yourselves. How did you get to this in particular? Whoever wants to jump in. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I, we were uh, making a documentary project as a part of our uh, film education at Florida State, and um, we all kind of wanted to go to like the greater Chicago area and like kind of the Midwest area. So we formed a group um, of like five to go out and make a documentary project. And um, uh, I had known about David a little bit um, because my uh, mom and him were friends uh, during college. And so when the time came around to make a documentary, we had watched like a similar, you know, sports documentary about someone who had like a interesting talent. And then it was kind of like a light bulb moment for Daniel and I, it's like, oh man, we should, you know, make a documentary about, about David. So um, Daniel and I ended up uh, coming together to co-direct it. And then Connie is, uh, you know, came together for our, to be our director of photography. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, Daniel, um, what, what did the process look like for you? Like, what did you go through in order to make this? Process? Um, a lot of the process came in the edit, but the, the inspiration definitely came from just a lot of cinema fairy tale docs, uh, like a lot of like Maisley Brothers stuff. Um, Italian America, just stuff where you're watching people just be themselves on camera and not forcing stuff like that. Um, we made it a big 
primarily just to try to be rolling, try to get stuff outside of the interviews, um, because that's kind of what we wanted to build our documentary around. Sure. And Connie, can you tell us a little bit about your role uh, in the project? Yeah, so um, the way it works is a little weird. You know, you get five people and then everyone falls into positions, but I had worked with Andrew before and I hadn't worked with Daniel yet, but we were all friends. And I was like, I want to shoot this. Um, and I'm really happy I did. Um, it's it's weird because it's it's we've never shot a documentary before. Who knows when we will again, but the process is very like, okay, well, we know we have to shoot these interviews and we know we have to get this B-roll so that we can make this story happen um, in the edit later. But um, so there's no like prep. It's like showing up, this is the space, this is the person, make it work, um, which is fun. I like doing stuff on the fly. And I think that um, like Daniel Andrew pushed me to be like better in the, in the best way possible, um, which I'm grateful for. And I had a lot of fun shooting it. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> we're obviously, like I said, we're going to get back to David, who is clearly the star of uh, of the, the the film. Um, but from from your perspective, uh, as the people who helped make the film happen, why why is this such an important story to tell? Obviously, we'll hear David from you as to why you believe that what you're doing is is so important. But from a from a filmmaker perspective, why why do you think it's such this is such an important story to tell? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, David embodies the, uh, the spirit of perseverance um, and, and, you know, wanting to do such a unique thing. Um, so that was interesting to us, but um, we, we just wanted to like tell a story that was, you know, a, a character based like documentary that was, you know, someone trying to achieve a goal. And so um, that was like a large part of, you know, wanting to do this like story that had like, you know, his background and, and how much he had achieved and then like what he was doing now and like, you know, the, the trials and tribulations of David's career. And, and I think also uh, Daniel and I wanted to do something that was like a fun documentary, you know, that had like jokes in it. And so that was like something that we latched onto, especially in the editing. Well, I imagine anything um, that you're going to call a, a, a rump jump um, and that is, I think, David, is what your kids called it. If, am I correct? Um, I always called them tush-ups instead of push-ups, but uh, I think Guinness called it rump jump. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like anyone who's going to call it a rump jump, uh, there, there's definitely, there, there's humor, uh, you know, <laughs> within this. And, and you know, you're, you, I think it was one of your kids also who said, like, that, uh, that you are a goofball, that you're silly, that you're creative. Um, and, and to hear that from your kids, because, you know, kids are, I think, uh, one of those, are those types of people with little filters, uh, very little filter. Um, and so they get to see you at your core, who you actually are. Um, how do you, how, do you resonate with that, with what they said? Is, is it, is it empowering? Is it, um, <laughs> <laughs> is it empowering to be called a goofball? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my children, uh, Tell it like it is, I guess. I'm, I'm, I am a singer songwriter too. So I'm always just, anytime I hear something quite often, I hear something and I pick up on some word play or a turn of a phrase or something. And I'm already trying to write the song in my head. And so, you know, things, I just say things sometimes that would sound goofy to, to most people, I would think. But I, I guess the reason I'm asking the question is, um, you know, obviously it's a Miami Jewish film festival. And so, you know, the, the question about your Judaism, um, whether it's from a religious standpoint or a cultural standpoint, sort of is weaved throughout the, the documentary. Uh, and I wonder if, you know, the comment, I think it was, um, I don't, I, maybe you were the one who made it, but it was in maybe there was an interview with your parents as well. You know, you have a you have a sibling who's a CPA, another one who's a lawyer, and and you are the rope warrior. So there there's there's got to be a sense of um, you know the Jewish stereotype of of if you're not a doctor or a lawyer, like are you successful? And arguably, you are extremely successful in what you do. So the intersection between sort of you know humor 
and 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 doing what you do to have an impact on people um, is uh, is so profound. So I was wondering if you could talk about that because uh, you know it's like mom, dad, I want to be a you know professional jump roper. Uh, How does that go? Um, well, I think I may have said it in the film, but I, I always like to say that my my family was very lovingly discouraging in the beginning, and. Uh, you know, certainly, I, I don't think my parents ever thought that their their oldest son would grow up to be a professional rope jumper. Um, but uh, you know, after a while, uh, and I, you know, they got interviewed for the NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw, and uh, you know, instead of being embarrassed about it, at some point, they things started to change a little bit. And um, you know, I've just always felt like because school assemblies have always been the staple of my business. Um, there's important messages in the show about what an aerobic activity is, why they're so important, other good messages about teamwork and about not being afraid to make mistakes. And, uh, and then because the show is so interactive um, and because I do a lot of workshops, I get to hear a lot of, I did it all day long, you know, and I feel like uh, as I've gotten older and maybe not physically able to do everything that I did, you know, back when I started, I feel like I'm always improving as a teacher and passing things on as well. And uh, there's a quote that I said at my, at our eldest son's bar mitzvah from uh, Rabbi Heschel who said, uh, the essence of a man is not what he is, but what he is able to be. And uh, I think that's good. It was good advice for him at a, as a 13 year old. And it's good advice for all of us. We can always, you know, strive to be better. It is better at whatever it is that we're doing. I love that. Um, and, and maybe sort of a nice segue is, um, were there any sort of, uh, we're going to get to sort of some physical challenges um, a, li a little bit later on, David, but um, for, for you guys, is there, were there any challenges you confronted in sort of making the film um, along the way? Yeah, I think we were worried about, um, you know, the, you know, the sort of stakes of like any documentary that you do and, and, and like this, you know, the story of like, oh man, what's, what's the conflict? So that was like a, a problem that we had during prep. Um, and then in the editing, it was just like coming through a lot of different, you know, footage um, and, and trying to make something that, that like was as streamlined as possible. But we also had a bunch of like COVID challenges because it, it was happening like right as uh, COVID was starting. So like it was the third week of March and we were going to film in this, uh, in this synagogue and then like the day before it got canceled and then we filmed in a school the day before the school was like no longer doing any activities because of covid and the same was true of um david's parents apartment um with the senior living facility so we had a bunch of that but we were able to we were able to scrape by at the very end and come out with our dog but we like barely finished it so that was a that was like a production challenge but Daniel, I don't know if you want to speak to any, anything, Daniel. I actually wanted to speak to like the last question um, that you had, Mr. Rothman, um, about the, I'm actually from the same area that David is from, the North Shore area of Chicago. So that's kind of how I latched onto the project when I heard that this, um, the rope boy was from here because like you said, like the expectation and security of, of living in one of those upper middle class areas and just being Jewish that that expectation there's a lot of you know going to film school myself like I feel I had that personal connection with uh with David and that's kind of that's kind of what we were trying to explore is the person you know the rump jump was like and it, a lot of people would have made the, the doc and it, it would have been more of like a, a bit about the the rump jump or whatever David did, but it, it, it was always about the person and um, um how why you know and, and like how he got there. So I just I just wanted to touch on that. But everything that Andrew said about COVID, yeah, we we barely got by for sure. 
I, I think barely getting by is is maybe the uh, one of the messages of COVID. But uh, uh, if there's one thing that I think the film um, does so well, um, it really in in what is it, 12 minutes, 13 minutes? It's it's, it's relatively short, uh, and in that period of time, it really takes you through um, the the arc, David, of of your of your sort of professional life um, doing this. Um, it was a very it's very interesting for for me as someone watch it for the first time, uh, the sort of transition between your early life um, and, and sort of how you, how you did it and, how you, and where you were featured to sort of like the, the pain, uh, the, the physical pain that you have been in and sort of surgeries and everything. And it happened very much like that. Uh, I was wondering if um, I, I'm going to ask sort of from a filmmaker p- perspective, but I want to go to you, David, first to talk about what is what does that look like um, for you in your life? Because um, the, the transition happened quickly in the film, but I imagine for you with the health sort of complications were were not as quick. Right. I think uh, things started uh, even before I had hip issues. Uh, our youngest son was maybe two and came home from daycare with a virus, a normal virus. Uh, and I caught it, but it attacked my spinal column, which happens like one in a million people. I had something called transverse myelitis. And uh, there are a third of the people that, that catch this, make a full recovery, a third don't recover. And then I'm in that middle group that recovered somewhat. And uh, I had to change my show quite a bit because I kind of lost I didn't have as much control over my legs as I used to. Um, so, you know, I, the show kept evolving and became more interactive and actually became, the show itself became better. And, uh, and then I started, you know, having these arthritic hip issues. And so at the time of the show, uh, of the shoot, I had had my first uh, hip replacement surgery and that hip felt great. (laughs) And I had about maybe a month where I was walking without a limp for the first time in quite a while. And then the other hip started to go. And so in March, you were seeing sort of toward the end of, you know, the the period of my second hip. But the, the good news is I've had that one operated on. That was one of the benefits of of the lockdown was that I had some time where I couldn't be performing anyway. And so that hip's been replaced. And so I'm, you know, setting out to prove everybody wrong again. And uh, I've been training really hard. I've been on the recumbent bike, you know, I, I was on it long before the surgery even started. So I could be as strong as possible going into the surgery. And I've been on it as soon as the doctors allowed me to uh, after and I, I feel stronger than I have in probably 15 years. And for the first time, you know, I went walking today with my wife outside, and um, she's like, a, you know, she's watching me walk without limping for the first time in a long, long time. So uh, there's a happy ending <laughs> at the end of it. But, you know, David, I mean, that's that maybe is the why you are the rope warrior because you know the rope is only a piece of it, but but you sort of um, overcoming uh, everything that you're doing, everything that you've been sort of dealt in your life uh, shows that, uh, you know, that, that the show will continue to go on. I mean, and, and, and that actually is, I think your wife said this, um, that you won't cancel a show um, um, and you'll, you'll continue doing this until you're physically unable um, and that you would do it from a wheelchair if you sort of had to figure out how to do that. And uh, that, that, that in and of itself, in my mind, is is uh, is inspiration enough for for sort of anyone who's watching this documentary, right? Like from from a from a filmmaker point of view, can you talk a little bit about like h- how did that how did that play into the stuff that you're doing? I mean, I, I think there's a second documentary that needs to be made of like you know post hips, post hip replacements. But um, what what went into sort of your thinking? How did you want to talk about um, David's sort of health decline um, in the in the documentary? I think we tried to address it the same way that we tried to address um, like his childhood and the things that I, I was touching upon before that same 
um, going against expectations, you know, proving, you know, believing in yourself and, you know, doing things for yourself because you know that you are like attaining a greater good in the end. Like you said, like David is inspiration. So what he does is obviously for his, himself because he's so passionate about what he does. But, you know, in the greater scheme of things, um, it, it's very inspirational, like his perseverance. Wonderful, thank you. Connie or Andrew? Yeah, I think I think Daniel said it best. Um, he's just we wanted to talk about um, all those all those injuries and talking to uh, Noah, who's David's a uh, physical therapist, and then talking to his parents and and Renee about that. So we just wanted to kind of get a wide swath of um, of that as well as like you know depicting it visually in like the scene where David's throwing um, football with his son and that kind of thing. So right. Uh, here, oh, sorry, Connie, please. I was going to say from like the, the camera perspective, it uh, like filming like David limping or like him coming off of a show, like off of these like vigorous jump roping work routes that I couldn't even fathom doing. And then he's doing it like with, with his hip. Um, like I, I felt bad, like pointing the camera there, but it wasn't ever like wrong. It was just the reality of it. Um, and I'm so glad to hear that it's better now. Um, but Thanks. yeah, at, at the time, just feeling very bad, like pointing my camera down, um, but like necessary and, and again, not wrong, but just real. I think that's everything that you've said is so important uh, to paint a picture of, 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 of David. Um, I, I, I laughed out loud, actually. There was a clip um, from, uh, it was a snippet from uh, E!, um there's the talk soup i think back in the day um and it was like something about like oh like look mom you know i'm an unemployable adult man uh and and, and i laughed because I, one i think it's funny but but like how how wrong was <laughs> was that like even at this point um you are very much an employable adult male trying to re like you're reinventing yourself in the in the in terms of your health and trying to figure out a way to continue to inspire generations of of people um, who who are searching to to make themselves relevant um, as as life circumstances change uh, it's you know it's the football player who injures himself on the field who you know now can't play professional football but has to do something different um, and, and you are sort of a model for that. Um, do, do you consider yourself that in, in any way? Like, is it, is it conscious or is it just me on the outside seeing that? No, I, I don't, I didn't really think about it at the time. I mean, I, I think as Daniel said, I, I just always been really passionate about what I was doing. Um, and, and I feel, I, I don't know, especially in our country, uh, that the message of uh, the benefits of exercise and, and all of that uh, is an important one, uh, especially to, to try and get that to children at a young age. Um, and that, you know, here's something that's not expensive and it can be a lot of fun, you know, and, and I've purposely designed the program to be as inclusive as possible so that no matter what physical ability someone has, uh, they can be successful doing a rope gymnastics workshop. And I've worked with children in wheelchairs and blind children and uh, all, all kinds of differently abled people and we've made it work. And, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting for me when somebody learns something for the first time and they're excited about it and maybe they'll be passionate about this or, or find you know something that they love to do and, and be passionate about that and be the best they can be at whatever it is that they want to do. Look, I think that there are, I think it's a wonderful message. And, and in fact, in Judaism, we have this idea of, you know, we say like refuah shlema, uh, to wish someone a, uh, a speedy recovery. But when we say that, 
it's it's a full recovery of mind, body, or spirit. Um, and so sometimes all those three things don't align with each other. Uh, but the recovery in and of itself is, even if the body is not fully recovered, may the mind and the spirit also recover. And so the work that you're doing, David, I imagine will transcend whatever, you know, even if you can't do uh, the, the same sort of, you know, um, rump jumps um, in the same exact way, that, that your message uh, becomes an inspiration for others. Uh, and and for, for, you know, for Andrew, Connie, and Daniel, for, for you making the film, you were instrumental in bringing that message uh, to, to people who actually need to hear it. Do you, do you have any feelings on that? Um, like, did, did you know that going into that you were going to do that for, for people who might be suffering for what, you know, David is sort of going through? Yeah, I think that, um, we, we definitely weren't, we didn't have that, uh, during the prep phase, like in back of our mind, but I think that, um, when you look at David and a lot of professional performers that go to school assemblies, there's like a, a common theme of just like body positivity and being like, you know, healthy and, and that kind of thing. And, um, and there are like other performers that, you know, will do like the X games. Like David has a, has a bunch of friends that have, um, you know, that maybe are differently able, but are like, you know, athletes or gymnasts. And we interviewed some of those for the film and, we're going to go on a tangent of that um, in the film, but we ended up kind of streamlining it on David's story. But um, there is like, you know, this, this kind of subculture of school performers that are like showing these positive messages to kids and then like, you know, having these great, these great messages. Um, David, I don't know if you want to speak to that at all, but. Right. Well, when I was speaking about it, I was thinking about my friend Lloyd uh, who was interviewed for the film, and uh, Lloyd Bacharach, he's also Jewish, uh, born with a congenital bone deficiency in both legs, and his program's called Yes, You Can. And I've watched him present this program uh, for very young children and, and older children, and it's such a, just a powerful message. And what I took from it was that, you know, even if someone's not physically able to do everything, you know, that they were at one point in their life or that they'd like to do, uh, they're, you know, that's where I got that phrase, differently abled. Lloyd is differently abled and he found a way to do things and make things work. And I, I've always felt that, and what I took from Lloyd's presentation, uh, as long as I'm able to speak and communicate, uh, I will find a way to, uh, to share my message and uh, you know, I, I'm grateful to Lloyd for that and uh, grateful to God that, that I'm still able to do what I love to do. It's a, it's a wonderful way to, to, to conclude this um, with, with that message. Um, and I, I think back on each time we conclude a book of the Torah of the, of the Hebrew Bible, uh, in synagogue, we say these words, chazak, chazak, benit chazek, uh, be strong, be strong, and let us strengthen one another. And uh, I think that's the message of, uh, of the, one of the messages of this film, um, that it's about strength, emotional strength, physical strength. Um, but as a community, we get to strengthen each other. And so uh, really to, to Andrew, Daniel, and Connie, you know, there's, thank you for, for bringing us the film um, and, and making sure that message comes out. And to David, uh, thank you for being you um, and, and helping that message uh, be brought, bringing that message to, to those who need to hear us, uh, to hear it. Um, and so uh, again, to, to David and Andrew and Daniel and Connie, thank you so much for, for this. Um, and uh, for all of you who enjoyed uh, the Rope Warrior uh, film,